These are crystalline structures formed from common chemicals and observed under the microscope. Paracetamol from your medicine cabinet, amino acids from workout supplements, even nail polish combined with wart remover. They're not just works of art, they're molecular self-assembly in action. Each pattern represents thousands of molecules organizing themselves into precise, repeating structures following fundamental laws of chemistry and physics. In this video, I'll show you how I make them, how they form, and why small changes in chemistry and technique can completely transform the results. This is crystallization on the microscopic scale, where chemistry becomes art and art illuminates science. To understand what we're creating, we need to start with fundamentals. A crystal is a solid material whose atoms or molecules are arranged in a repeating, ordered pattern, what scientists call a crystal lattice. This isn't random, it's nature's way of minimizing energy by finding the most stable arrangement. Crystallization can occur in several ways. Cooling a hot solution where solubility decreases with temperature, evaporating a solvent to concentrate the dissolved material, or changing the chemical environment to reduce solubility. But the driving force behind all crystallization is supersaturation, when a solution contains more dissolved material than it should theoretically hold under equilibrium conditions. Once supersaturation is reached, crystallization begins when molecules start to gather into a stable nucleus, a small cluster that other molecules can grow onto. This is called nucleation. The ordered structure of crystals gives them a unique optical property called birefringence. When polarized light passes through a crystal, it splits into two rays that take slightly different paths through the crystal and travel at different speeds. This creates the brilliant interference colors you see when we observe crystals between crossed polarizers. The same principle that reveals stress in glass or identifies minerals in geology. Right now, you're seeing this crystal in black and white because the polarizers are blocking most of the light. But watch what happens when I insert a simple piece of cellophane, a retarder, into the light path. Spectacular! These colors aren't pigments, they're pure physics. The crystal's internal structure, combined with the cellophane, creates these interference patterns. And by rotating the cellophane, I can shift and enhance these colors even further. Now let me switch to a different piece of cellophane. Each piece has its own unique optical properties, revealing an entirely different palette of colors from the very same crystal. Many consumer products are mixtures of crystalline and non-crystalline materials. By isolating specific components and inducing recrystallization through dissolving, heating, or evaporation, we can reveal the organized crystal forms hidden within these everyday products. Take paracetamol, acetaminophen for you Americans. The tablet contains fillers and binders, but the active ingredient itself is highly crystalline. When we dissolve and recrystallize it, we reveal its true molecular architecture. But here's where chemistry gets interesting. Watch what happens when I combine paracetamol with urea, a compound found in fertilizers and skincare products. The crystal forms change completely. We're seeing co-crystallization, where two different molecules incorporate into the same crystal structure, creating entirely new patterns and properties. Add citric acid to this mixture, and the structures transform again. In a co-crystal, the different molecules fit together in a repeating lattice, linked by hydrogen bonds or other weak interactions, forming a stable hybrid structure. This isn't just mixing. It's a molecular level redesign emerging from self-assembly. Each component influences how the others arrange themselves, following the fundamental principle that molecules will organize to minimize their total energy. The real magic happens when we start combining multiple substances systematically. Introducing different components can lead to co-crystallization, altered solubility, or dramatic changes in crystallization kinetics. 
Even slight variations in ratio, temperature, or solvent volatility can completely transform the resulting morphology. I experimented with different proportions of acetone, nail polish, and salicylic acid, a common ingredient in wart remover. Each image shows progressively more nail polish in the mixture. Watch how the crystal forms evolve, from large layered structures to clustered formations. Notice how they become smaller and more curled as nail polish increases. The nail polish contains polymer chains that interfere with normal crystal growth. These long molecules adsorb to the growing crystal surfaces, interfering with the crystal's ability to grow smooth, flat surfaces, what chemists call faceted growth, introducing stress that bends or twists the structure. Instead of growing in straight lines, the crystals curve and twist as they try to accommodate the polymer chains like trying to build a brick wall while someone keeps adding rubber bands between the bricks. Now, here's the same combination, but I've changed the solvent system to a two-to-one mixture of acetone and methylated ethanol. The results are dramatically different. Why? The mixed solvent creates different evaporation rates and surface tensions, fundamentally altering how the molecules can arrange themselves during crystallization. These aren't random variations. They follow predictable physical principles. Fast evaporation typically produces smaller, more disordered crystals, while slower evaporation allows time for larger crystals to grow at the expense of smaller ones, a process known as Ostwald ripening, resulting in clearer, more defined structures. Humans are wired to find meaning in complex visuals, a phenomenon called pareidolia, it's why we see faces in clouds or animals in rock formations. These crystal patterns can trigger the same response with molecular arrangements coincidentally resembling familiar objects. What do you see in this formation? To me, it looks like a chess knight piece, that distinctive L-shaped horse head from the game board. And this one? I see a squid, complete with tentacles radiating outward or maybe the torch from the Statue of Liberty. Here's what appears to be a Swiss army knife, blade extended, a tomahawk, a slice of bacon, even Goya's clothed Maha reclining on her side. Our brains seek familiarity in abstract forms, even when the patterns are purely accidental. Let me know in the comments what you see. These are patterns that emerge from molecular self-assembly guided by physical laws, not intentional design. These shapes emerge from the way molecules minimize their surface energy during crystallization, the same mathematical principles that govern pattern formation throughout nature. Sometimes these coincidences are remarkably striking. This heart-shaped crystal formation bears an uncanny resemblance to the heart nebula that I've photographed through my telescope. The same fundamental organizational principles creating similar patterns at vastly different scales, from molecular to cosmic. These crystal patterns often echo forms found in nature, branching, symmetry, radial balance, because similar energy rules govern everything from snowflakes to neurons. BALG, beta-alanine and L-glutamine, creates perhaps the most beautiful crystalline landscapes I've encountered. These delicate curls and flowing patterns come from one of the most sensitive and unpredictable combinations I've worked with in microscopic crystallization. What makes BALG special is co-crystallization, where two amino acids assemble into a single ordered lattice, stabilized by intermolecular forces like hydrogen bonding. The result is these extraordinary curved formations that seem to flow across the slide like frozen rivers of light. The curving happens because the two amino acids have different crystal habits, their preferred growth patterns. The differing growth tendencies of each molecule may create internal stresses during co-crystallization, leading to the striking curls and bends seen in these structures. Under polarized light with retarders, these structures reveal their true complexity each curl represents thousands of molecules organized in precise repeating patterns, yet bent 
by the competing influences of their molecular neighbors. Perfecting this combination took many iterations. Minor changes like tweaking the alcohol content or adjusting the mixing ratio had unexpectedly large effects, revealing just how sensitive crystallization is to environmental conditions. The method you choose to crystallize a compound fundamentally changes the results. Compare these two samples of the same chemical, one grown from solution through evaporation, the other from melting and cooling. They're chemically identical, but their shapes are completely different. When we melt a compound and let it cool, crystallization happens quickly. The molecules in the liquid phase have high mobility, but cooling reduces this rapidly. This creates what we call a kinetically controlled process. Crystals form fast, often with defects, creating the straighter, more geometric patterns you see here. Solution-based crystallization is thermodynamically controlled. Evaporation happens gradually, giving molecules time to find their optimal positions. The solvent acts as a mediator, allowing molecules to diffuse and orient themselves more carefully. This usually produces the curved, flowing structures we see in systems like BALG. But why does our evaporated ascorbic acid look like delicate branches rather than flowing structures? The answer lies in the details. I gently heated the slide to speed evaporation, which completely changes the crystallization dynamics. Fast evaporation creates rapid supersaturation, favoring the formation of many small nucleation sites that grow outward in branching patterns. That's exactly what we see here. This demonstrates a fundamental principle. Crystallization method is just as important as chemistry. Each compound has multiple ways it can organize itself, and the conditions we create determine which form emerges. Temperature, solvent choice, and even how we spread the solution all affect everything from surface tension to how molecules can move and orient during crystallization. Additives can dramatically alter crystal growth. A polymer-like nail polish distorts normal faces, while a co-crystallizer like urea rewires the internal structure. We're engineering crystal architecture at the molecular scale. The tools and equipment can quickly make your home look like an apothecary. Chemicals and solvents, beakers and pipettes, microscope slides, micro scales, heating plates, the list grows quickly. While I could spend an entire video on the technical setup, let me focus on one key photographic challenge that every crystal photographer faces. These crystals are three-dimensional structures, but our camera captures a flat image. At high magnification, depth of field becomes extremely shallow. Only a thin slice of the crystal remains in sharp focus while the rest appears blurry. The solution is focus stacking. While I sometimes painstakingly take dozens of still photos one by one, I often record a short video instead, sweeping through the crystal's depth from front to back. Each video frame becomes a separate image, and the stacking software uses those frames to reconstruct a final image that's sharp throughout. Here's one of those focus sweeps. I've been playing it forward and backward. And now, here's the final stacked version of that same heart-shaped crystal. The difference is dramatic. Focus stacking reveals fine details that would otherwise be blurred out, bringing the three-dimensional architecture of these molecular formations into sharp relief. And these images aren't just scientific curiosities. They're genuinely beautiful with practical applications. I've had a jigsaw puzzle printed from one of my favorite crystal formations. My desktop mouse pad features another striking pattern. Many of these images work beautifully as computer and phone backgrounds. Microscopic crystallization reminds us how structure can emerge from apparent disorder. It's not always predictable, but it's almost always fascinating. What begins as a simple solution of household chemicals can self-organize into patterns that rival anything in nature or art. The science behind these formations connects fundamental physics and chemistry to visual beauty. Every curve, color, and branching pattern 
reflects underlying laws, yet the results can still surprise us. Whether you're drawn to pure science, artistic possibilities, or simply the joy of discovery, microscopic crystallization offers endless opportunities for exploration. Each experiment teaches us something new about molecular behavior, optical physics, or just the hidden beauty in everyday materials. If you'd like to see a detailed walkthrough of the preparation techniques and equipment setup, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do a follow-up video or even a live stream covering the hands-on process. Thanks for joining us on today's look inside the microcosmos. We hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel so you won't miss our next adventure.